Hi everyone, welcome to our video on fire safety. What is fire? Fire is a chemical reaction in which fuel combines with oxygen and gives out bright light, heat and smoke. For fire to exist three things must be present. Fuel, heat or source of ignition and oxygen. Let us see each element of fire. Fuel is a combustible material or substance that is consumed during the combustion process. Example are diesel, petrol, wood and oil. Heat or a source of ignition must be sufficient to intitate and propagate the chemical reaction for combustion. Example, open flames, spark from cutting and welding. Oxygen is consumed during combustion when it is chemically combined with the fuel. 16% of oxygen is needed to ignite a fire. The fire triangle and fire tetrahedron are both models that describe the basic elements required for a fire to occur and sustain itself. The fire triangle model identifies three elements that must be present for a fire to ignite and burn, heat, fuel, and oxygen. The heat source raises the temperature of the fuel to its ignition point and the oxygen in the air combines with the fuel to produce a flame. Without any one of these three elements, a fire cannot start or will be extinguished. The fire tetrahedron model expands on the fire triangle by adding a fourth element, chemical reaction. The chemical reaction refers to the process that occurs when the fuel and oxygen combine to release energy in the form of heat and light. This chemical reaction sustains the fire and allows it to continue burning. The importance of fire triangle is for fire to exist three things must be present. Fire prevention. Keep the three elements apart. Fire cannot start. Fire fighting. Remove one of the elements and fire will go out. Fire control techniques are methods used to control or extinguish fires in order to minimize damage to property and prevent injury or loss of life. There are several techniques used for fire control, including, starvation, smothering, and cooling. Starvation removing fuel. This technique involves removing the fuel source from the fire, which prevents it from continuing to burn. This can be accomplished by shutting off the fuel supply or physically removing the fuel, smothering. This technique involves cutting off the fire's oxygen supply, which causes it to die out. This can be accomplished by covering the fire with a fire blanket, foam, or dry chemical extinguisher. Cooling. This technique involves reducing the temperature of the fuel below its ignition point, which stops the fire from spreading. Water is the most common cooling agent used for this purpose. Fires can be classified into different categories based on the nature of the fuel involved, the cause of the fire, and the type of combustion. The most common classification of fires is as Class A fires, Class B fires, Class C fires and Class D fires. Class A fires. These are fires that involve ordinary combustibles such as wood, paper, cloth, rubber, and plastic. Class B fires. These are fires that involve flammable liquids such as gasoline, oil, paint, and solvents. Class C fires. These are fires that involve liquefied gases under pressure such as LPG, acetylene. Class D fires. These are fires that involve combustible metals such as magnesium, titanium, potassium, and sodium. The major causes of fire include flammable chemicals, hot work, plant and machinery. Overloading of sockets, combustible dust, static electricity, poor housekeeping and smoking. Controlling fire hazards in industries is crucial as fire incidents can lead to serious damage to property, equipment, and machinery, which can cause significant downtime and financial loss. Here are some tips for controlling fire hazards in industry. 1. Conduct a fire risk assessment. Identify fire hazards and assess the risk of potential fire incidents. This can help you develop a plan to mitigate the risk of fires. To install and maintain smoke detectors and fire alarms. Test them regularly to ensure they are in good working order. 3. Store hazardous materials properly. 
keep flammable and combustible materials in designated storage areas that are away from sources of heat and ignition. 4. A hot work permit and fire watch used to control the risk of fire when performing hot work activities, such as welding, cutting, or grinding, in an industrial facility. 5. Maintain electrical equipment. Regularly inspect and maintain electrical equipment to ensure they are in good condition and free of damage. 6. Earthing and bonding. Earthing and bonding are essential in controlling fire hazards in industries. Proper grounding and bonding of electrical systems and equipment can prevent electrostatic discharges and reduce the risk of electrical fires. 7. Plan Preventive Maintenance PPM. Plan preventive maintenance of plant and machinery is essential to control fire hazards in industrial facilities. PPM involves regular inspections, servicing, and repairs of plant and machinery to prevent breakdowns, reduce downtime, and extend the lifespan of equipment. 8. Maintain fives and good housekeeping. Keep work areas clean and clutter-free. Avoid clutter and keep work areas clean and free of debris to prevent the buildup of flammable materials. 9. Prohibit smoking in the workplace, and avoid the use of open flames helps in controlling fire hazards in industries. 10. Readiness of firefighting equipment. Ensuring the readiness of firefighting equipment is critical in controlling fire hazards in industries. Regular inspections, proper storage, maintenance, testing, training, replacement, and cooperation with the fire department are some key steps to ensure the readiness of firefighting equipment. 11. Develop an emergency response plan. In case of a fire, have an emergency response plan in place including evacuation routes and procedures. 12. Training. Train employees on how to use firefighting equipment, including fire extinguishers and hoses. 13. Fire evacuation mock drill. Conduct regular fire drills to ensure that employees know what to do in case of a fire. What is fire safety? Fire safety is a set of practices intended to reduce the destruction caused by fire. Fire safety measures include prevent ignition, limit the development of fire, limit the effects of a fire after it starts. What is a fire protection system? A fire protection system refers to a collection of equipment, devices, and procedures designed to detect and mitigate the effects of fire in a building or other structure. The primary goal of a fire protection system is to save lives, protect property, and minimize damage caused by a fire. Fire protection systems can be classified into several categories based on their design, function and application. Here are some of the commonly recognized classifications. 1. Active Fire Protection System 2. Passive Fire Protection System Active Fire Protection AFP, systems include equipment and devices that detect, control, and extinguish fires. These systems require an action to activate them and are meant to intervene directly with the fire. Examples of active fire protection systems are fire sprinkler systems, fire extinguishers, fire alarm systems, and fire suppression systems. Passive Fire Protection PFP systems include the design and installation of fire resistant materials and structures that provide protection by containing the fire and preventing its spread. These systems are meant to delay the fire from spreading, and thus buy time for occupants to evacuate safely or for firefighters to arrive on the scene. Examples of passive fire protection systems are fire resistant walls, floors, and doors, fire rated glass fire retardant coatings, and fire stop systems. Now let us learn about fire extinguisher and type of fire extinguishers. What is a fire extinguisher? A fire extinguisher is a device used to control small fires by dispensing substances designed to extinguish flames. They are essential safety tools in homes, businesses, and public buildings, and can be used to put out fires before they become too large or out of control. A typical fire extinguisher consists of several components that work together to extinguish a fire. The main components of a fire extinguisher are 1 cylinder, 2 pressure gauge, 3 valve, 4 handle or lever, 5 nozzle or hose, 6 safety pin, 
7 extinguishing agent as per the Indian government's general fire regulations GFR of 1985 fire extinguishers should be installed at specific locations within a building to ensure they are readily available in the event of a fire here are some guidelines for the location of fire extinguishers one fire extinguishers should be installed in easily accessible and visible locations preferably near exit points two fire extinguishers should be located on every floor of the building at least one in each section and in all areas where a fire hazard exists such as near electrical panels near flammable materials and near cooking areas three fire extinguishers should be mounted on brackets or in cabinets that are clearly marked fire extinguisher with letters at least six centimeters high for the distance between any point on the floor of the building and the nearest fire extinguisher should not be more than 15 meters five fire extinguishers should be located in a position where they can be easily seen and their location should be clearly marked with a sign that is visible from a distance of at least 15 meters there are six main types of fire extinguishers classified by the type of fire they are designed to extinguish one water fire extinguishers two foam fire extinguishers three dry chemical powder or abc fire extinguishers 4. Carbon Dioxide Fire Extinguishers 5. Wet Chemical Fire Extinguishers 6. Special DCP Fire Extinguishers Water Fire Extinguishers have a red label Water extinguishers are used on Class A fires involving solid combustibles. They are not suitable for fires fueled by flammable liquids. Foam Fire Extinguishers have a cream label. Foam is a versatile fire extinguisher which can be used for Class A and B fires. The foam agent helps to prevent reignition. Is involved. Dry chemical powder or ABC fire extinguishers have a blue label. Dry powder extinguishers can be used on Class A, B, C, and electrical fires. Dry powder is not recommended for use inside because there is a risk of inhalation. It can obscure vision and cause damage to goods and machinery. Machinery Carbon dioxide fire extinguishers have a black label CO2 fire extinguishers are used for fires involving electrical apparatus. CO2 is not a conductor and does not leave behind any harmful residue. Wet chemical fire extinguishers are typically identified by their bright yellow color. A wet chemical fire extinguisher is a type of fire extinguisher that is specifically designed for fires involving cooking oils and fats. Special dry fire extinguishers have a blue label. These specialist powder extinguishers are suitable for use on metal fire but are ineffective on all other fires. Refer the fire extinguisher chart for selecting the appropriate fire extinguisher based on the type of fire and the material involved. When using a fire extinguisher, it is important to remember the acronym PASS, which stands for Pull the pin, aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, sweep from side to side. By following these PASS steps, you can effectively use a fire extinguisher to put out a small fire and prevent it from spreading. Let us see what fire and emergency response is. What is fire emergency response? The proper response by individuals to assure the safety of others and limit the damage caused by fire and smoke is known as fire emergency response. If you see fire, the most important thing to do is to make sure that you and anyone else around are safe. If the fire is small, you may be able to extinguish it with a fire extinguisher or water if it is safe to do so. If the fire is too large or out of control, you should evacuate the area immediately and call emergency services. If you see fire, here are some ways of communicating fire emergency 1 by shouting fire 2 by using fire bell 3 by activating the manual call point, MCP, 4 by calling emergency contact no. During emergency, information communicated to emergency contact number should be clear and precise. There is useful acronym for emergency information flow, ethane. E. Exact location. T. Type of incident. H. Hazards present. A. Access routes. N. Number of causalities. E. Emergency service required and present. Stop. 
Drop and roll is a fire safety technique that is taught to children and adults as a way to protect themselves in case their clothing catches fire. Stop. If your clothes catch fire, do not run or panic. Instead, stop where you are and try to remain calm. Drop. Drop down to the ground immediately and cover your face with your hands to protect it from flames and smoke. Roll. Start rolling back and forth on the ground to extinguish the flames. Cover your entire body with a rolling motion, including your face and hair. Let us see how to properly evacuate during a fire. Guidelines for what to do and what not to do. Steps to follow to escape the fire at your workplace are 1. Raise the alarm. 2. Leave the building. 3. Check the toilet. 4. Check the list. 5. Test the system. 6. Keep the exits clear. 7. Gather at assembly point. 8. Help the disabled people. Steps to follow to escape the fire at your workplace are 1. Don't fight the fire. 2. Don't run when leaving. 3. Don't use the lift. 4. Don't abandon the people. 5. Don't block the exit. 6. Don't collect the items. 7. Don't return. 8. Don't panic or delay. In conclusion, fire safety is essential to prevent and minimize the devastating effects of fires. By being aware of potential hazards and taking preventive measures, we can ensure the safety of ourselves and those around us. Thank you.